Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So our last video was about an unboxing of some dollhouse furniture kits that I ordered off of eBay. Well, before I can go forward with that project or even go further with any more of the kitchen projects, um, I have to announce that it has been brought to my attention that my assistant is upset with me um, because I actually made her bed out of a kit that I ordered over a year ago. And I'm gonna show that to you. Um, it's a lovely little bed. I assembled it, stained it, made her mattress. Um, it's all set to be dressed and I never dressed it. And she's been so patient and so helpful and cooperative with my projects. And um, yeah, I feel bad. I've been a little neglectful as far as getting her room together. So we're going to dress her bed and I'm going to do something extra special. Um, the other beds were pretty simple, but I'm going to do her something really pretty um, for her bed. I also, um, to give her some privacy, because um, you know she's a newlywed, um, I have... Um, a beautiful piece of pink silk. I'm going to make the make curtains for her room um, as well. Um, and this um, piece of silk is kind of a nostalgic piece. Um, it actually belonged to my great grandmother. Um, it's like almost like a little bitty small pillowcase type thing, but she used it as a sampler, sewing certain um, certain sewing techniques. I guess she was learning how to use her sewing machine. Um, but yeah, it's kind of special. And so I thought it would be really cool to have it um, inside the Roman house, Dow house. So I'm going to cut some pieces off of this and actually make some beautiful curtains for my assistant's um, bedroom. So that's going to be um, our project uh, today. So just wanted to let you know what we were doing um, after we finish this video today. We will move forward um, with our kitchen projects and we will be working on putting together um, those kits that I ordered off of eBay as well. Okay, so let's get on to the video of making a beautiful bed, dressing for her bed, and some lovely curtains for my assistant. Okay. Okay, so here's the fabric that I've chosen. I don't have a design in mind, but I like these fabrics. Now, this green uh, fabric was from an old, um, another project I had, and it's like a velvet. I do intend to use lace today. And so, yeah, let's just go ahead and get to it. Now, this is that fabric was the one I'm going to use for her bed skirt. And these are for the pillowcases. Now, the fabric is a little rumpled up, so I definitely will need to um, iron that. And also, the other beds, I didn't do top sheets, but I have chosen a piece of fabric to be her top sheet. Now, I'd already shown you um, the fitted sheet, but I think this picks up the colors in both. So let's go ahead and get started. So what I did um, for the bedspread, um, the bed has posts on the ends, so I cut little slits in the piece of fabric that I wanted to use for her spread. And I'm going to actually have to tack that down at the tip to close it up so their feet won't get cold. Um, but the way the bed is made, I had to make the splits. So we're going to work around that. So to get started, I'm going to begin with her top sheet. Now with the top sheet, I'm definitely, like I said, I need to um, iron it out a little bit because it's a little rumpled up. And I am going to um, use the same technique that I used for when I made um, the curtains and some of the other uh, fabric pieces that I've made. Here I'm just trimming it out. And I'm going to use a very thin bead of the liquid stitch. Okay, I'm struggling a little bit here with the glue. I guess it's getting close to the end of the tube. So I guess I need to go to the craft store or put in an order for some new supplies. But yeah, I'm going to I'm going to push through with this, but I am going to choose another way to get that out of there cuz we're not going to struggle like this through the whole project. But just taking a really um just a really thin, very shallow hem just to finish it and turn it over. You don't want to use up too much of your fabric to do that. And just smooth it down really gently. 
Now I'm using my pointed tool to add the glue to the rest of the part and just checking it to see just how it'll look on the on the bed. Now I went on to start working on my bed skirt which I feel like is the foundation of the design. Again, I didn't have a full plan for what I'm going to do, but I knew for sure I wanted it to be a little bit fancy. So I cut out two pieces to be the bed skirt. I actually ended up cutting a third piece to be the skirt for the end of the bed. But because the fabric was a little rumpled up and it is 100% cotton, it was not taking to the ironing very well. So it needed a little bit of encouragement. And I just use my clover iron. Now, I do think I've mentioned it before, but if you have a clover iron or choose to purchase one, be very, very careful to make sure you don't burn yourself or burn anything um, with it. It is unforgivingly hot. And so here I'm just trimming off the bed skirt and going to prepare to do a hem on it very similar to what I did on the top sheet and just taking it gently and folding a very shallow hem because you don't want to use up too much of your fabric. Now although these pieces weren't scraps I still didn't want to use excess amounts for them in case I wanted to do another project using them. And take your time when you're working on things like this. You don't want to speed through it. Um, now, I'm definitely sure you can see that the video for this portion is sped up because I try not to make um, some parts just too long and tedious. But definitely, this is not something that can be done in 20 minutes. It took me a day, including all my coffee breaks and sandwich breaks and things like that. So take your time. Make sure your hands are clean and try to have to clean the glue off them periodically as well. Because I knew I wanted it to be um, long enough to create a nice level of ruffle. So the fabric is about uh, a time and a half longer than the side rails of the bed. I didn't measure it because, you know, me and little Gretchen don't um, measure that often. But if you want to make sure your uh, measurements are precise, I would advise that you do that either a time and a half or twice the length of your side rails, depending on how full and fluffy you want the, the ruffles to be. OK, so here we are. And so now I'm going ahead and prepare the actual bed pillows using the same fabric. Now I paused for a moment to think about decorative design, but I had to stop and get to the actual body of the pillow. I guess you can't decorate until you at least have the finished product. So in this instance, I did a very simple uh, pillow design. Actually right here, I'm putting the glue on the wrong side. It actually should be on the inside, but I made a pillow design <laughs> more or less uh, like a little piece of ravioli. And when I say ravioli, I mean that you just glue the edges all around, flatten them out and leave the inside poofy. You'll see in a moment what I mean. I'm just laying it so everything will be flat and square. And you definitely want to make sure your pieces are the same size because you don't want to have um, pillows that don't match or aren't relatively the same size because visually you'll be able to tell. Now here you can see I'm stuffing the pillow and that's probably some old quilt batting that I got from my mom during her quilting uh, years. And see now you can kind of see the pillow it does look kind of like a little piece of ravioli. Be sure to make sure you stuff your pillow to make sure all of that is stuffed in because it's a synthetic type of batting. And if the iron hits it, it'll melt it. it it's not going to iron well. So I'm going to seal that inside real nice and neat and just iron it down. And see, it looks like a little puffy piece of ravioli. So you're going to do the exact same thing to the other pillow. Now here I'm trying playing around with the designing again, but I leave it to the side so I can go on and work on the skirt, the bed skirt. Now I did measure here to make sure my length was right. 
and got everything prepared. Now, in, in this situation, you definitely could have used the made the bed skirt, just a straight bed skirt, which is a great option, but I wanted mine to be a little ruffly. So I pulled out a new clean brush and I got my water. Now I'm going to make that water solution, water and glue solution that I used when I did the kitchen curtains, cafe curtains for my kitchen. If you haven't seen that video, definitely check it out in my playlist. But generally it's one part glue and three parts water. But the general rule is just to make it look like cloudy, cloudy, um, cloudy water or thinned out milk. The more glue you add, the harder your ruffles will be when they dry. Now, I just want to throw in a little disclaimer here. I'm adding the glue um, to the side rails of the bed, but for some reason I did not wet the fabric, which is my process. Um, I recently had some dental work done and I was taking pain medication, so I don't think all of my cylinders were firing that day. So I began to try to add the fabric and it wasn't wet. I didn't wet it with the solution at all. And I was struggling and couldn't figure out why I was struggling. I didn't even realize that I hadn't wet the fabric until I started to edit. So forgive me for this dolls. But I continued on and forged, forged on and put the ruffle on the bed dry, which again is not my process, but it worked out. I didn't edit this out because I wanted you to know that even sometime when you make mistakes, you can still end up with a great project. Okay, now you can see here I fa finally began to add the water and glue solution and just begin to pinch the pleats and pull them down. And as the, the fabric absorbs the water and paint solution, it becomes easier for you to shape and get um, the desired uh, result. And you can see the poof started to drop, drop out of them the more I um, brushed it with the glue and pulled on them. So it was working out. Again, just take your time um, as I mentioned so many times in my other videos that this is a uh, edited video. So definitely just take your time. Don't rush through this because you want to be satisfied and proud of the project that you make. So just take your time and you see me there just pinching along and pulling on the ruffles. Now here's the other side where it's all on, but it's all bunched up and I'm adding the glue again. Now, I did use tweezers to help me kind of pinch those pleats to kind of make them um, a little bit more realistic. You can do it with your fingers, but uh, definitely sometimes tweezers help. And here's my bed skirt on the bed. It's all dry and ready for me to dress the bed. Now, I had a lot of ideas tumbling around in my head and didn't altogether know how I was going to um, fashion the bed. But as I worked along, it came to me. Now, you're probably wondering, why is she using so many colors? Okay, I do like colors. And I felt like even though these colors don't match, they coordinate. And based on the wallpaper and the color of the room that I'm putting the bed in, I think it'll work out nice. Now in this frame, I'm just kind of uh, warm, warming or fusing the glue with the iron for the sheet. I didn't glue her sheet all the way down her top sheet like I did in the other beds. Now, uh, because I wanted to make it where I wanted, if I wanted to put her in the bed, I could. And here we are with that uh, velvet bedspread again. Now you remember I talked about the splits because of the post. I'm just kind of just fitting it on there so I'll know how I need to glue it. And I think it looks really cute so far with the bed skirt showing. And here is the lace that I chose. And yes, it's purple. Yes, it is purple. 
And it may seem like a lot of colors now, but when it all comes together, you'll see it's going to be really cute. And here I was just kind of playing around with it to determine how I would pinch the fabric when I got it on there. And just add in the glue to just close it. And I didn't want to close it a lot, but just kind of lay it so it'll look like it had a little weight to it. I didn't want it to fly up. And just held it gently now in these frames I'm using fabric fusion it dries really really quick so you don't have to hold it long fabric fix is great it gives you a little bit more time to manipulate it so I'll use that in other pictures but in this one I use the fabric fusion and it dries really fast I'm definitely going to have to use some tape to get all that lint off Velvet pulls so much lint and just holding it gently. Okay, so I'm moving on to the pillows because I'm making matching pillows for the, the bedspread and cut them out of the same fabric and measured them to make sure that they were the right size for the bed. Now here I'm using uh, that same fabric that I showed you that I'm going to use for her curtains. I decided to make her a small pillow. Now this is the same, um, same lace that I'm going to use that I showed you in the other frame, but I turned it inward to give the little silk pillow a nice design. I thought that really turned out pretty. And it's funny, I made the decorative pillow before I made the main pillows, but I, I just definitely it just got inspired right there and I had to do it right away. So now these are the actual bed pillows. So again, using the same lace and instead of turning it inward like I did on the little silk pillow, I let these be outward. Now you definitely could have taken that lace and turned it on the corners. Uh, yeah, that's I, I, I can, but it's an annoying process for me. So I just cut the lace in four pieces and glued them. The fabric fusion is going to hold them nice and tight. And to make sure I secure the ends, I'm going to warm it with the iron really quick. And again, just take your time. This video is definitely sped up just for the purposes of it being a really tedious process. But definitely take your time and cut your pieces of lace even so you don't waste your product. And when you get done, if you need to, you know, just use the iron to make sure all the pieces lay down because you don't want your lace popping up. You can definitely uh, avoid that if you turn your lace. But yeah, I don't like to do that. Okay, so now I'm getting to the final part. I'm adding my lace um, to the green pillows and I'm using a similar process like I did with the little um, pink silk pillow. I turned the lace more inward. Well, I guess it's not inward because the lace is the same on both sides, but I don't have the lace hanging off the free edge. I have it laying more on the body of the pillow. Be careful not to use too much um, glue, especially if you're using the velvet because it will uh, ruin the um, face of the velvet. So be really careful there. But I thought that turned out pretty. Now, if you're using synthetic lace, don't use the iron on it. Just kind of fluffing it up there. It didn't lay like I wanted it to, so I pulled it loose. Those glues do give you a little time to manipulate them and put it back and it doesn't mess up. That turned out really nice. I hope you take the time to use some of the tips and tricks that I'm showing you in this video to create something beautiful for your doll's bed. And as I mentioned, I didn't have a plan when I started. I just started to play and it came to me as I went. But I look at a lot of pictures for inspiration. So just take your time. And now I'm adding the lace to the, the hem, hem portion of the bedspread. And I'm able to just bend it right around that corner. The fabric fusion is just awesome, helping me catch the lace 
because I don't like sewing at all. I guess I feel like it slows me down. And little by little, just pinch it along. Just slowly pinch it along. I'm really excited about it, the way it's turning out. I think she's really going to like her bed. That was a frame where another idea came to me. I'm pinching the corners to make sure it has the drape because I did not use the water solution on the velvet because I was concerned about how it would affect the color. The velvet is older and I didn't want it to stain or um, just look ashy. So I didn't use it. So I just used the glue to tack down areas that I wanted to stay down. And here's the portion I just was folding down at the top. And I just secured it with a little paper clip until it dried into the position I wanted it. So use what you have to make it work. Make sure when you're working on your project, you turn it on all sides um, just to make sure everything looks like you want it to look. You know, you don't want to like just speed through it and rush through it. You have to just play with it, kind of pick with it until it really feels right to you. I really liked it, but I just felt like something was missing. I was really pleased the way everything turned out, but I just felt like it needed another pillow. You probably think, wow, if she has five pillows on there already, why would you need another pillow? But you're just not satisfied until you're satisfied. So I continued to pick at the, the leg and play with the, the ruffle just to make sure everything looked like I wanted it to. I guess I was concerned about the pillows looking too flat because her headboard is so low. Now definitely I want you to um, look out for the video for her curtains. Because this video was a little bit longer, I'm going to make a second video um, to make her curtains. So be looking out for that. I see right there, it looks really cute how it's peeking out from the bedspread. I'm really pleased with the overall look of the bed. Definitely have to get that lint off of it. But isn't that cute? I thought that was really pretty. And I love the little silk pillow as well. Now, if you're enjoying these videos, definitely let me know in the comments. Also, like, share, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you'll be informed when I upload more video here on Little Gretchen's Workshop. So, yeah, I did it. I made a little bolster pillow, just made it in a sleeve shape, and just added lace to the end of it that was just like the lace on the other part of the bed, just really quick. I hope this little tip comes in handy. It was a last minute thought, but I definitely think it works in the overall look of the bed. It may seem like a lot, but to me it was just enough. There it is. Real simple, easy. It's really going to enhance the look of the bed. I hope you dolls enjoyed this. Now here's her bed before the bolster, and I'm going to show it to you after the bolster when I put it in her room. I want to hurry up and put it in her room before she comes to bed. Now I just want to say a special thank you to all my subscribers and to those who haven't subscribed but you've been watching. I sure do appreciate you as well. Thanks so much for watching Little Gretchen's Workshop. Stay tuned for the curtains episode. Bye bye now dolls.